Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Megan. This is Amanda, Matt, Aaron, and Logan. And we looked at an exploration on cannibalization and market basket analysis for a furniture company. So cannibalization is just when a company introduces a new product and they are concerned that that product is taking sales away from products in their uh, product line. So Steelcase introduced a new chair called Series 1 in fall of 2017, and they're concerned that um, this chair is taking sales away from their other chairs. So we received two main data sets from Steelcase, the pricing data set, which was a pretty large data set, about 8 gigabytes, and the cannibalization team didn't look at that one as much. We focused on the shipping data, and we looked at um, the variables order create date, product line code, shipment date, and quantity. So for the six years of interest, we decided to sum the quantity order uh, throughout all the years of the data set given. We decided to make graphs. So each chart on this graph represents one chair. So this vertical black line represents the chair of interest, um, which was released in 2017. So as you see from this graph, uh, it's very cyclical, and we think that's because the chairs, it was summed per month. So we decided to sum the chairs per year to get a better graph. So this graph represents all six chairs of interest. They're ordered quantity summed per year. So as you see, there is an increase, and then it starts to plateau. So again, this vertical black line that is the introduction of the newest chair. So we see this steep uh, drop off right here, and that's just the 2019 data, so you only see two months of it. So what's interesting is if we zoom in, we have this second vertical black line. So that was the introduction of a previous chair. So as you see, from the year before to the year it was introduced, there's a large spike. So we were expecting to see a similar spike with the introduction of this new chair, but we didn't. Yeah, so to try to calculate any potential cannibalization from Series 1, we decided to perform linear regression on the other five shares of interest. So the goal was to predict what the sales for those five shares would have been in 2018 had Series 1 not been introduced and then compare that, those projected sales to the actual sales with Series 1. Um, and as Amanda said, the, chairs for the, the sales for these chairs are pretty cyclical, so we decided to do a prediction for each quarter. So that gave us 20 regression equations as there's four quarters and five different chairs of interest. And then we decided to use uh, 2013 to 2016 data because we found that that gave us much more accurate predictions than uh, what the entire data set gave us. Um, this is just an example of uh, one of our regression lines for, a, for our third quarter for one of our chairs. Um, as you can see, there's only four data points on this graph, so that's just something to keep in mind going forward. Um, the R-squared value for this particular regression line is 0.733. Um, so here we have a table of the residuals for each chair by quarter. Um, so that's just taking what the actual sales were for this quarter for this chair and then subtracting what we projected the sales should have been in Series 1 not been introduced. So as you can see, most of these cells are negative, which, which means that we're predicting higher sales than what actually was sold for each chair. Um, and then this bar, these bar graphs kind of just reiterate that. Um, so the bar on the left is what, we, what was actually sold for each chair, with the bar on the right being what we predicted for 2018. And as you can see, for four of the five chairs of interest, the prediction was slightly higher than what was actually sold, except for this metal chair. So that kind of indicates uh, potential cannibalism. And then this bar graph um, compares what we projected was lost in total in the number of chairs sold. Um, and then on the, the bar on the right is how many chairs of Series 1 were sold in 2018. So as you can see, well, we had to kind of block out the quantities for legal reasons, but. Um, we project that Series 1 sold a little bit more than the total lost um, sales for the other five chairs. Yeah, so in conclusion, we are led to believe that Series 1 did in fact cannibalize some of the chairs of interest, uh, just because we saw that plateau of the chairs um, in 2017 versus the, um, the lack of spike after Series 1 was launched, like we said, saw, see you in 2013. And then also the predicted sales were just consistently lower than what we um, had hoped they would be. Although these conclusions may be overly pessimistic just because um, chairs are sold in trends like they 
um, had peaks and lows, so it's just hard to uh, really tell. So for our future work, we would look deeper into <clears throat> time series forecasting, which we did here, but the confidence interval was just a little bit big, um, bigger than what we were expecting. And then we would just use more data. So we only have a year and a half after series one has been introduced. So it's just really hard to um, say for right now. All right, so the other um, problem that we've investigated was market basket analysis. And that is a way of predicting um, what a future customer may buy based on what previous customers bought. So if um, customer A bought product A, B, and then they bought product C, and product customer B brought, bought product A and product B, um, did customer C do the same thing? Um, so there's three, three probabilities that are investigated um, that are used, confident, support, and lift. Um, and then just an example, um, so it's like an if-then statement. So the antecedents are the if part, so milk and eggs, and then the then part is the consequences, so bread, yogurt, and cheese. And since we're under confidentiality, we have to use um, generic products instead of the actual products that we looked at. We decided to go for food. Yep. <laughs> So we have those support, confident, and lift. I'll briefly explain what they mean. Support is a frequency of x and y over the total number of items. So um, it's more or less a probability that those two items exist in that data set. Confidence is more of a, a conditional probability. If you order x, what's the probability that you ordered y? And then lift is a little bit hard to explain. It's the total, it's the total probability of the support of uh, uh, both of those, the actual, and then over the support if they were completely independent. Uh, so it gets that ratio. So what did the data look like? Uh, we got a uh, bunch of pricing data, which is what we use this for us. Um, and that was a very large data set, as they said, eight gigabytes. And that had millions of rows and about 40 columns. Uh, each row represents an item in order. So we have a, an example of what this looked like. Like if you had order one and they ordered apples, they might order five of them. Uh, and I needed to get that into this format in order to put that through a program called ML Extend. And this is what it kind of should look like. A binary, if they order, did they order apples and eggs in order one, or milk and sausage in order two. So we put that through and got a list of rules. So from the CSV file, we threw that into a tableau and got um, and we made a bar graph. So in the bar graph, we have the antecedents and consequences in the columns, and then the weighted average in the row. So instead of looking at the probabilities all individually, we decided to put them together and create an equation. So we did point one time support and. We did a smaller support because we didn't think it was quite as important, um, but we still wanted it considered into the equation. And then we did 10, 0.4 times times confidence and 0.4 times them. So this is an example of what the bar graph looks like. As you can see at the top, we have the antecedents, and at the bottom, we have our consequences. And then on the columns, we have the weighted averages. And from the graph, we took all the rules and all of the weighted averages and we put them into a Word document um, set up in the if then format and then the weighted average at the end. Um, and what we were looking at was we were looking at subgroups. So as you can see, we have three of the same products in three different subgroups here. And ideally, they're going to be around the same weighted average. And they're basically going to be the same thing. So what we did was we averaged all of these weighted averages and then just stuck them into a single group looking like this. Um, and what we saw was two different types of products. One product was a unique product. So the chocolate, peppers, and ham, you can see they're only in their separate subgroups. They're not mixed in. Um, and then the other product is one that's across the board. So if you see the eggs, the eggs are in all the subgroups, um, not just a single one. So in the future, we might want to look at how market basket analysis before and after the introduction of that chair series one uh, and see if that had any influence on that.
But while uh, uh, we were kind of finishing up, we s decided to look at how products were related in another way. We wanted to look at that in a network sense. Uh, so we created a network of products where the weights on each edge were the, how often those products were ordered in the same order. So using this, we want to cluster those items together. So we might want to, if this was an example, we want to cluster this and then cluster those. Clustering, uh, so I use two kinds of clustering, special clustering and Louvain's method. Uh, cl clustering for special clustering, did it in two very large clusters and some small clusters, but it often worked in just one, and that was kind of not as ideal. And subclustering on those large clusters didn't uh, really yield anything meaningful. So I tried the Louvain's method for hoping for something better, and that created three clusters of decent size and around like 13 tiny ones with only one. But it did that with more consistency, which was what I really liked about that. So I preferred Louvain's methods clustering afterwards. And with this, Sealcase has an idea of what products are kind of related together. Uh, in the future, we might want to look at how product categories are related at a so broader scale, and perhaps try subclusters for Louvain's. So this is a picture of us who ended up um, being able to go to Sealcase and present in front of some of their team there. Um, so that was a really cool opportunity. And in conclusion, we just want to acknowledge our industrial partners, Brian and Connor, and our professor, David Austin, who just been a huge help throughout the semester. And we'd also like to thank PICMAP for this opportunity.